But I, I wanted to just read this word to you. Um, it's out of Isaiah 45, verse 8, which is the passage that speaks about Cyrus. I believe that we're in a Cyrus season. I know that we attached Cyrus to our previous president, but I just want to say we're in a season of Cyrus. That's where the unlocking of wealth comes from. I'll give you the hidden riches of secret places. But it says, right after that very familiar passage, it says, Rain down you heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. That is open heaven. Amen? How many have heard about open heaven? How many preached about open heaven? How many believe have heard open heaven? All right? But I'm tired of talking about an open heaven without seeing an open heaven manifest in an open earth. And then if we've really got an open heaven, things should change in the earth realm. It says, let the skies pour down righteousness. And then it says this, let the earth open. Say that with me. Let the earth open. And it says, let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. I believe that God has had us in the season prophesying about the open heaven. But now I believe we're in a place where God's saying, I want you to pull that open heaven down into a manifestation in the open earth. Now, I want to remind us as prophets that that, that we have several missions. Each one of us has an individual mission. But I want to sum it up three ways. Number one, we're called to open hearts. And then how many recognize that the prophetic word should actually open up hardened hearts? So many times in my life, I go to Mercy Multiplied or Mercy Ministries, which is a rehabilitation home for young women, and I prophesy the word of the Lord. I spent four weeks a year going in and prophesying over some of the most broken young women. And I could stand here and tell you story after story of how the prophetic word is spoken to these young women who are so broken and so devastated by life. Some of them have been trafficked. Many of them and most of them have been abused. And yet the word of the Lord goes forth and in an instant transforms them from thinking that they're useless or worthless or too far gone and immediately turns them around to believe that God's going to use them to do great things. Come on, the prophetic word is one of the most valuable tools that we have to give people a true identity about what God has said to them. I prophesied over one young lady that came up. She was all in black. She was she was very goth in her presentation, very dark, very angry. And so when I laid my hands on her to prophesy, I just had to shut my eyes. You know, so you know what I'm saying? So I shut my eyes and I prophesied to her. And the Lord said, my daughter, you are not forgotten. The Lord said that to her three times, and then he went on to prophesy about the great things that she was going to do. When I said she's not forgotten, she broke down and started weeping and crying. When I got done ministering that day, she ran up to me and she said, she said, I want to tell you why I reacted. When you said God said I am not forgotten, she said, this is why I reacted. And she rolled up her sleeve, and she showed me that on her forearm, she had taken a knife and had carved the word forgotten. And the Lord saw that, and the Lord said to her, you are not forgotten. I want you to understand the prophetic word is one of the most powerful tools to open up the most hardened hearts. Amen? We can't forget that if we're prophets, we prophesy. Amen? It's the work of the ministry. We must prophesy. Number two, we're called to bring open vision. And I believe that God will use many of us to bring strategies to impact the seven mountains of culture. We had words today about education, words about government, words about business. We've seen God give people prophetic words that literally transformed their business. And I can tell you story after story, but I want to get to the third point. The third point is, is that we're called as prophets to open the heavens and to open the earth to change cities and nations. And we have to understand that Psalms 29 verse 4 says the voice of the Lord is powerful. That word powerful is the Hebrew word koach, which literally means the voice of the Lord is a force. It's a, it's a force that moves out every opposing force. And that, now we moved to the Panhandle of Florida in 1984. We planted Christian International under Bishop Hammond. We planted our church there in 87. And it wasn't long before we realized that God had moved this pioneering prophetic ministry into a territory that had pristine white sand beaches, beautiful pine trees, one of the most beautiful areas.
areas in the United States of America, and yet that territory was completely overrun by two demonic spirits, the spirit of witchcraft and the spirit of poverty. Melody's come to us for 30 plus years. Back in, back in those days, we've discovered that within a 10 mile radius of us, there were 10 identifiable cult groups, witches, century of voodoo cults, Satanists, psychic gurus, psychic healers, you name it, we had it. We didn't have a grocery store, but we had 10 cult groups. Seriously, okay? We started having things astral projected to our homes. They started decapitating animals and throwing them on our, the doorstep of our home, the doorstep of our church. I was running back to my Bible college book saying, where did they cover this in class? Come on. Sometimes what we've got to do is we've got to rise up and we've got to engage. And so we began to walk our ground. We began to walk our land. We began to prophesy. We began to do prophetic acts. We began to make decrees. We discovered that, uh, that the spirit of witchcraft was entrenched, but also was the spirit of poverty. And as we prayed against the witchcraft over about a 15-year period, hear me what I'm saying, it didn't happen overnight. There's bowls in heaven that we were filling up. And after about 15 years of doing prophetic acts, we started seeing the spirit of witchcraft break. But then we had to take on and see that spirit of poverty break because we would watch businesses open, the businesses close. We would watch people build homes and then go into bankruptcy. There was a spirit in the land that kept this most beautiful area from prospering. What did God give as a weapon against the forces of darkness? He said, prophesy. Prophesy to the dry bones. You know the word dry bones? It actually comes from a convergence of three Hebrew words. Shame, confusion, and disappointment. We began to prophesy to the dry bones of our community. We began to declare the word of the Lord. We began to write decrees over our land. Because in our county record books, our territory is called poor man's island. As a demonic decree. We began to decree what God said. I want you to know in the year 2000, the Lord actually gave a spiritual insight regarding the names of the two spirits. They're found in Isaiah 65, 11, Gad and many, the God of wealth, the God of fortune. I don't have time to teach on it. But the Lord has in a time of intercession where we actually stood against those two demonic spirits to break the spirit of witchcraft and poverty off of our land. And I want you to know that when God gave us that revelation, after 16 years of intercession, God gave us that revelation then we went into a suddenly season. Suddenly, our land, our territory, our county was listed as number 64 on the economic scale out of 67 counties in Florida. We were one of the poorest counties in all of Florida. Within 18 months of God giving us that revelation, we were named the wealthiest, richest real estate market in the entire continental United States. If you've ever heard of Rosemary Beach, Seaside, Watercolor, Alice Beach, 30A, I don't know, we're a long way from Pittsburgh, but if anybody in the South has ever heard of those, that's the area that we live in. God gave us a prophetic word that unlocked a territory, and now we are the playground of the rich, of the famous, and of the wealthy. God took us out of poverty, and God blessed our territory, because the word of the Lord said the devil is not going to take over our land. Come on, God dropped this pioneering prophetic ministry down into this land, and he said, listen, you need to learn to fight or die. That's a word for us today. We've got to understand that God's calling us to engage. Come on, God's calling us to engage. There's a contending that we must do for our own territories, for our own cities, and for our nation.